Question one. Um, we have got a bacterial cell. The bacterial cell and plant mesophyll cell both have a cell wall and a cell surface membrane, labelled there. One, so we're giving one other way in which the structure is similar. So, similar things, so I can see these little dots here, those are ribosomes. So, both have ribosomes. That's the most obvious thing that I can see there. Other things I could possibly say, I could say, well, hang on, they've both got cytoplasm. So I could go cytoplasm, or I can go, oh, look, I can, you know, I know that's DNA in there. Well, they've both got DNA, although there are some differences in how the, the DNA is, is packaged up. Um, other suggestions um, don't really come into this because it says one other way. Uh, and we talked about a membrane and the cell wall. Three ways in which this structure is different. So lots of things. We could we could talk about the nucleus here. And and it says this bacterial cell, not a general bacterial cell, but this particular one. So we can't mention flagella or anything like that. So obvious differences here. We've got no no organelles. So no, no organelles, um, e.g. Uh, uh, mitochondrion, or any other one that you can that you can name. Now, we could say there's no nuclear envelope or no nucleus here. No nuclear or nuclear envelope. Okay. And, I, you, and you'll notice that I'm talking about this bacterial cell. And I'm not actually talking about the, the plant cell. I'm doing it from the bacterial cell point of view. If you were talking about the plant cell, you'd still get the marks, but you need to mention the plant cell has got that, that sort of thing. Other things we could say here, you know, we've mentioned the ribosomes. You know, these are smaller, so ribosomes are smaller. Other things we could mention, if we could mention the fact that we've got you know, what's referred to as a mesosome there, we could talk about we have got this area here, this capsule that appears to be shown. We could say the cell wall is made of a different material, you know, murine. We could talk further about the how the DNA is arranged. Um, so three, three good points there. Part B: An animal cell contains many membrane-bound organelles. We know that. Name one other membrane-bound organelle in an animal cell. So we need to be careful that we're choosing one. Be careful that it's not one that we've mentioned. So some people have mentioned a nucleus or a mitochondria, and we've had to say, well, read the question. And we need to make sure it's membrane bound. So we can't really say, you know, things like ribosome, because that's not actually, you know, something with a membrane around it. So possibly we will go for something like rough endoplasmic reticulum. We're not saying rough ER because that could be anything. Rough emergency room, rough, you know, whatever. We need to say it out in full. And the function, so for example, protein synthesis. We could, you know, go for other things we could have said, you know, the Golgi, we could have talked, you know, about smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So a choice of a choice of things there. And here's a nice table. All you're doing is lifting, lifting the function out of your notes. What could be uh, more straightforward than that? So we've got, I'm going to go for uh, ATP production 
in aerobic respiration. How about that? I want to say protein synthesis. I'm going to say, so those two are pretty straightforward. A smooth, so it's transport of. Well, what? It's a smooth, so it's, we're not really talking about proteins anymore. We need to talk about lipids. So transport, packaging, production of lipids, that sort of thing. And the Golgi, we can always say modifies proteins. You could have packaging proteins, transport proteins, that, that sort of thing as well. So a nice straightforward four marks there. Question three, name A, B, C and D. A is a, a cell membrane, surface membrane, plasma membrane, that sort of thing. B, centrioles. You could say centrosome or microtubules. C, this is our Golgi again. So Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. You could possibly say smooth endoplasmic reticulum there. Yeah, but it's kind of a, a stack of curved you know, membranes. So we're, we're going to go for Golgi there. And we have got D. You know, we've got little dots on some membranes. That's got to be our rough endoplasmic reticulum. So not rough ER or RER, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here's our calculation. Magnification is 12,000. Calculate the actual length, giving the answer in micrometers. Show your working. Right. So we're calculating the actual lengths and the only bit, other bit of information that we need is the image size and we're actually doing it for mitochondrion labelled M. So not the whole cell but just the mitochondrion labelled M and we can look on there and depending on uh, how your ruler is, it's kind of halfway between 11 and 12. So I'm going to call that 12 millimeters. So um, image size equals 12 millimeters. We've got the magnification is times by 12,000. And so. You know, one way to think about it is, you know, it's on the page it's 12 millimetres, but it's actually 12,000 times smaller than that, so I'm going to divide it by 12,000. And we need uh, convert micrometres here, so I'm actually going to convert to micrometres first. So, 12 millimetres is 12,000 micrometers. So there's a thousand micrometers in a millimeter. And so our calculation is, uh, the actual size is image divided by magnification is 12,000 divided by 12,000 and that equals one. And I'm gonna put the units there, micrometers. If you, if you did 11, that would be 11,000. So if you did it by 11, so it would be uh, 11,000 divided by 12,000. I might need a calculator for that. 11,000 divided by 12,000. And that will give you 0.916 recurring, uh, which we would give to maybe two significant figures as 0.92 micrometers. So that's if you if you decided that the image size is 11 millimeters. So fun with cells and uh, magnification.
we have a cell and we have a, a diagram of a cell. They're a nice diagram. And we have our stage micrometer. What are we asked to do? How could Lisa have made the cytoplasm and nucleus appear more obvious? Uh, the answer is not magnify any more. Because even if you make it bigger, it's not going to be any clearer. It's just, just going to be bigger. So you used a stain and it was iodine for your, for your onion cell. So use iodine stain. We were quite generous if you mentioned just iodine or just a stain, we, we gave you that mark. Calibrate the eyepiece graticule using the stage micrometer to determine the length of one eyepiece unit. Show your working. So, just need to this look at the, the scales, and we've got well, we've got an eyepiece that's that scale there. And we've got the stage down here. Information that we've got on here, we've got our eyepiece goes from 0 to 100 in the little divisions. So 0 to 100. And here, this would go from 0 to 10. And each stage division is 0 0.1 millimetres. So that's the information that we've got. And our calculation is, is going to start off 100 eyepiece units is 10 stage units. And then we're going to introduce this 0.1. So we're going to start off here 100 eyepiece units uh, equals 10 stage micrometer units. So I've written it out in full there and you can't go wrong. And now 100 eyepiece units equals, well what are these stage micrometer units? We've got 10 but each one is 0 0.1 so it's 10 times 0 0.1 10 times by 0 0.1 stage micrometer units. And it asks us to determine the length of one eyepiece unit. So we don't want 100 of them, we want one. So we're going to divide that by 100. But we need to do that on the other side as well. 10 times by 0 0.1 divided by 100. When we work that out, we get 10 times by 0.1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01. 0.01 millimeters. So one eyepiece unit, so one eyepiece unit is 0.01 millimeters. And actually it says, can we have that in micrometers please? So actually we need to convert that. So we're going to move this decimal place, three decimal places on. One, two, three, like that. So it would be ten. So it would be point one. Uh, 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 maybe I like the other one, two, three. There we are. Ten. So it'll be that ten there. So that's going to be ten micrometers. Use the calibration value, that's what we've got there, calibration value. Work out the actual length of the onion cell. Right. Well, actually, we've got here, we've measured this in eyepiece units. There, 18 eyepiece units. And we know what one eyepiece unit is now. So it's just 18 of our, whatever we've worked out. So, I'm going to write this out. Cell is 18 eyepiece units in length now each eyepiece unit is 10 micrometers so the actual 
length is 18 of these eyepiece units. So 18 times 10, you can do that in your head, and that's going to be 180 micrometers. And now we can work out the magnification. So magnification, remember, we've got magnification, we've got image size, and we've got actual size. The magnification we don't know, the image size, well we can measure that with a ruler, and actual size we've got 180 there, micrometers. So image size, well what's, what's that? I need my trusty, trusty ruler. And again, a slight interpreting, but I, th I think that's 86 millimeters long. So, so image size, 86 millimeters. If we're doing any calculation, I can't do it with millimeters and micrometers. So the easiest one to convert is millimeters into micrometers, which is 86,000. So 86. One, two, three, moving the decimal place, and that's now in micrometers. And so I now divide that, so I've got my 86,000. Now, if you work at it logically, how many of my actuals fit into my image? And that'll be the magnification. So my magnification is is. 86,000 divided by 180 is 12. Is 86,000 divided by 180 is, on my calculator, 477.7 recurring, but that's a ridiculous number, so I'm going to say 478. So equals 477. So you can retire now and, and uh, live off. Yeah, and yeah. even even Mr. Mr. Rogers, the king of calculators, is uh, is agreeing with that. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll call.